What's going on YouTube? Bolt Matrix here and today we are taking a look at Transformers The Last Night Voyager Class Premier Optimus Prime. Now this figure is the Voyager Class for this line. I'm pretty sure we're going to probably get another Voyager Class figure but this one is the first one and I have to say it is pretty darn good. Now the overall aesthetic is definitely the movie Prime. If you don't like the movie Prime you're not going to like the way this figure looks. And that's perfectly okay, but there is a lot to like here. There's a lot of good molding, good use of paint, and the overall look is quite good, even though he's got a good chunk of, well, robot, or I should say not robot kibble, but a vehicle kibble on his back. The detailing on the figure is good. The soulless blue eyes is really my biggest complaint. And the only other thing that I don't like about it is there are just blobs of color in spots. Yes, there is a lot of detailing in the molding, and overall the figure does look good, but there are just blobs of color. And what I mean by that is there are large, single-painted sections. Like, look at the legs here. You've got blue for big chunks, and then silver for another big chunk. And that kind of carries out throughout the figure. Optimus comes with two very cool accessories. This sword, which does need a little bit more paint, but I do appreciate the fact that they at least made it orange on the blade. It is a very nice sword. It is actually pretty strong. It does have a little bit of flex, but the other way, no, it doesn't. I'm probably going to take this myself and go ahead and put a, like a 0 0.005 millimeter marker to it to give it a little bit more definition. Then the shield is powder blue and silver and fits on his arms and looks okay. It's kind of a less detailed version of the shield that we got last movie. Unfortunately, the sword and the shield do not combine this time. I really wish they did, because that would make for a sweet, sweet buckler sword weapon. Voyager Class Prime has a lot of posability for this kind of figure. But before we get into that, I want to show you his kibble. And it's kind of unavoidable. You've got a lot of truck hanging off back here. You've got a good chunk of the front of the truck hanging off the rear legs, and you've got the sides and the top of the truck hanging off the back. Honestly, I'm not sure at this size class how they could fit or hide more pieces. Now, Evasion Prime, probably the best Voyager class figure of all of the movies combined, is probably the best Optimus figure, or one of the best Optimus figures of all the movies. In fact, if the last couple of years, in all honesty. This is a fan freaking tastic figure. Now, it manages to hide the almost the entire vehicle mode along the figure, and especially up in the chest, but you're also dealing with a significantly smaller vehicle mode. This is a cab over truck, meaning the cab is over the engine, classic Generation 1 Prime. This Prime is is not. This one is a traditional truck where the engine sits in front of the driver's cab, so you have a lot more mass to deal with. So that explains a lot of the kibble, and let's face it, the design doesn't help much. And by that I mean the movie design, not the design of the figure. So let's get into the posability. Head is on a ball joint, shoulders are on a couple of swivels and hinges, upper arm articulation, full 90 degree bend at the elbow, Fists do not articulate, unfortunately. A couple of people on Twitter have said that they really wish it did. I can see that. Waist articulation, or I should say torso articulation. Hips are a series of swivels, a swivel at the mid-thigh, and not much bend at the knee. No real foot articulation, unfortunately. Not that big a deal, though. However, Evasion Prime has loads more leg articulation, so there is that. The next bit of this Prime is his transformation, which I am thoroughly impressed with. Like Evasion Prime and like some other Voyager class figures, it has one heck of a transformation. And really, I have to tip my hat to the designers because they did a bang-up job, considering what we're just about to witness here. So, to start off with, we're going to come up to the chest and kind of pull the chest away from the body and then take his pectorals, and the inside of the pectorals will be rotated up towards the head like that, then open the chest up and flip the head into the body cavity. Then take the chest and have the pecs or the pectorals facing towards the top of the figure. 
Then come to the arms and fold them straight out like that, lifting up the shoulder pads. Then take the arms and find the little peg point sticking up in the shoulders. So there are pegs at the back of the shoulders. Fold the shoulders back, rotate the blue parts back, and that little peg will peg into the shoulder blade blade section. And then we can fold the shoulders in towards the head like that. So we'll do that on both sides. And getting this pegged in is actually a little difficult because the pegs don't always line up. Oh, there we go. Then we take the arms and point the, well, truck parts towards the top of the figure. Come to the truck parts and they will accordion out over the fists like this. And then come and combine together. They don't really hold together well at this point, but they will. Next, come to the backpack, fold up the top of the truck, and fold out the sides of the truck, and just leave that all as it is. Oh, one thing I did forget to show you in robot mode is the sword can fit in this scabbard that Prime has back here. So that is a nice touch. I do really like that. Moving on. Torso. Rotate the torso 180 degrees. Then come down to the feet. And oh boy, this is going to be a little bit complicated. So to start off with, take the thigh swivels and turn them so that the feet are pointing in towards the middle of the figure. Unpeg the wheels and the arches from the backs of the or the sides of the legs. Come to those sections and flip up the grill. Actually, what we do is flip it all the way around. We do the same thing on the other side. Then unpeg the feet and rotate that entire section 180 degrees, like so. And then just get the front of the cab section out of the way. Then reach underneath the figure and flip up these gray sections, and these two will peg in to form the trailer hitch. Warning, they're on ball joints that come off much too easily, so just be aware of that. So peg them in and do that now. Trust me. Take the, take the crotch skirt, flip it up, fold the legs back to form the back of the vehicle mode. Just get everything lined up. And then take the entire section that the feet are attached to and flip them to the front of the vehicle mode. And then the feet will push up and then fold up underneath this section here. So collapse the foot, peg it into place, roll it up, and just get it up underneath the chest piece like so. And don't worry, it doesn't peg into place. It's not supposed to. But what is supposed to peg into place is this little piece that pegs into the top of the thigh. So just get that in there and then push that into place with some force like that. And once you do that, everything should sit on top of the foot. And do that for the other side as well. Fold up the foot. Fold that whole section up peg it into place in the thigh. And now you can kind of see where everything's going to go. So push the arms down as far as they will go and connect the inside, or I should say the outside of the arms, to the front of the truck modes and then sandwich the truck modes together like that. Then we could take the panels here, flip them closed, and they will peg into the sides of the wheel arches. Do that for both sides. And things don't always completely line up. Then bring the trailer cab down, snap that into place, and pray that everything holds together. And that's the truck mode. Now one last thing for the truck mode is we can hide the sword under here. And then the shield pegs in to the back. The truck mode we have got here is pretty darn good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And it's good enough that my th nearly three-year-old son looked at it and went, cab, I play with. 
So uh, there's that. It's a decent size. How does it fare up to Evasion Prime? Well, it is significantly bigger than Evasion Prime, and this is the difference in styles of cabs that I was talking about. So we'll put Evasion Prime off to the side. It's overall a pretty darn good trailer mode, or tractor mode, I should say. I would have liked to have seen the windows be more clear, but being painted black is fine. The in-life Prime itself is more detailed than this because it's, you know, an actual thing that exists as opposed to just a toy. This isn't bad. It isn't bad at all. My biggest gripe in this mode is it just feels like there's a lack of paint, but this is pretty much what Prime looks like. Now here is the Voyager class figure versus the one-step change armored knight figure. You can see that the paint is weird because on the Voyager class figure, it's the complete opposite color for the flames that the one-step change has, which is odd. I don't know why they did that. But the one-step change has better silver piping for the actual pipes than the Voyager class figure. Weird. And then we've got the Age of Extinction leader class figure, who, well, it's got more chrome, but it's, well, also got more flames. So there is more detailing in the leader class figure than there is this Voyager class figure. But I think the Voyager class figure is perfectly fine. Because if you remember, this leader class figure wasn't very good to begin with, especially the robot mode. But the vehicle mode is not bad. But I still like the Voyager class here that we have now better. And then because I feel like I have to, here's the leader class figure, or was it the special leader class figure, from Age of Extinction. You know, the Amazon exclusive one that's a piece of junk. I still like the little Voyager we've got. The designers of this figure should be proud of themselves. I think they have done a fantastic job working pretty much magic with a design that, let's face it, the movie designs are not easy to adapt into little plastic figures. I'm sure they have worked on much more complex stuff than this, but they've done a good job. This figure is pretty darn good, and I highly recommend it, especially considering the other figures that we have to work with. Berserker's fine. Barricade's okay. Bumblebee is... Ugh. I'm not reviewing Bumblebee, by the way. I don't want to buy that figure again. The transformation for this figure is good. The posability is good, and it looks pretty good as well. Plus, it has a neat sword and shield. Posability could be a little bit better, but it's not bad. So I would recommend picking this up, especially in this first wave. This, this first wave of figures is really light on quality stuff. This small Voyager figure is hands and this small Voyager is much better than either of the Age of Extinction leader class figures that we've gotten here in the past, which I have back here in robot modes. No, it's not as shiny, but it holds its kibble and hides its truck mode much better than either of these two guys do. I still think Evasion Prime, this dude, is a better figure, but this Prime is perfectly good for this particular design. So gang, if you can find him, I would definitely pick him up. So thank you for watching this video review. As always, I am Bolt Matrix, asking you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.